worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun, hallelujah, to the going down, the setting of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit told me for some of us, we've had a challenging week. Uh, we've had some ups. We've had some downs. But today I want to declare we have the victory. Anybody know that we have the victory in Jesus Christ? Listen, the Bible says, don't you walk by your feelings. Not today. Somebody tell your feelings, not today. Not today. We're walking by faith today. We're pressing in by faith today. We're going to glorify God. So today, before we even get started, we want to make a declaration today. Victory is mine. It's nice and easy. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Come on, declare that. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today in my. Come on, somebody ain't got that yet. Said joy is my. Come on, help me say that. Joy is my. Joy today is my. You gotta say this out loud. Said I told Satan to get me behind. Cause joy today is mine. Come on, tell somebody. Peace is mine. Devil trying to steal your peace. Peace is mine. Come on, say that. Peace today. Come on, take it back. Said I told Satan. What does he got to do? Get me behind. Why? Peace today is mine. One more. Come on, say love is mine. Come on, help me say that. Love is mine. Say love today. Said I told Satan, what does he got to do? Get me behind. Said love today in my. Can, the, can we just testify? Said when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would bring. Said I fell down on my knees. I said, Lord, help me, please. And I got up singing, shouting, the victory. Come on, anybody want to say that one more time? Oh, victory is my hey, victory is my victory today. somebody because we have the victory if you want to stay in victory you got to hold on to God's unchanging hand come on tell somebody everybody ought to hold to his hand said God's unchanging hand come on tell somebody hold to his hand said God's unchanging hand Help me say, hold to the heart of change. Everybody ought to hold. Come on, help me say, Send a God's unchanging hand. Tell somebody ought to hold to his hand. Say, God's unchanging hand. You ought to be. Come on and 
stand please as we recite this together for our visitors it is overhead if you'd like to read with us and we are going to start the mission of Union Missionary Baptist Church is to operate as a 21st century New Testament church empowered by the principles of God's unchanging word engaging in ministry relevant to a changing world. And as we see, our world is changing. It's changing. I don't think it'll ever be the same, but God is in control. God is in control. Our responsive reading for uh, this month is Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7, and 10 being our meditation verse. 
And if you would look over on the monitors, you can read along with me as we read that. And the uh, title is The Consecrated Life, Set Apart for Our Kingdom Calling, Ephesians. Verse 4, but God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Hallelujah. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point us to all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us. As shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Our meditation verse. For we are God's masterpiece. Hallelujah. You need to hear that again. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the word of God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, we thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence, God, giving you praise, honor, glory, and to edify and lift up your name, God, because truly you are worthy to be praised. There is none like you, God, in all the earth. And so, God, we look to you today as we worship and honor your name, God, for who you are and all that you're doing, God, in our lives, God. We thank you for another opportunity to be here today, God. You woke us up this morning. You got us started on our way, God, and you blessed us to come into your house so that we could praise and worship you. So, God, we ask that right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would bless this time together of fellowship and love in your name, dear Heavenly Father. And we just ask that you would just continue to lead and guide and direct this ministry in the way that you would have it to go, oh God. God, we ask that you would bless the man of God who is coming to proclaim your word, oh God. And we just ask that you would anoint him right now, God. Cover him, shower him with the blessings of your word, God. That a rhema word might come forth, God, that we might all know, God, and understand the things that you have for us to do. Oh, God, we thank you on today. We bless you for these who are here. And we thank you for those, God, who couldn't come, but God wanted to come. And, God, then we thank all of those who are watching over the virtual. God, just send your blessings. Let your blessings be extended towards us and out through the world. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Hallelujah. Amen.
Yeah. 
is your testimony. Stand up right now and give our God some praise. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Now we're here. Looking back on where we come from. Because of you and nothing we've done. To deserve the grace and mercy you've shown. Your grace was strong enough to pick us up. And you made a way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over for you you made a way and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you made you made a way
Anybody in here grateful that the Lord made a way? So he says, don't know how, but you did it. Is there anybody that can testify that you was going, you've been going through some stuff, but the Lord has made a way? You don't know how, but he did it. Now you're standing here only because he made a way. This is, this is, this is just our testimony to somebody who's going through right now. You don't know how you're going to get through it, but can we just let you know that the Lord made a way. My mama used to say, the Lord will make a way somehow when beneath the cross. We bow, he will take away your sorrows. Let him have your burdens now. And then it says, when the load bears down so heavy, the the weight it shows upon my brow. But I say to myself, be patient. The Lord will make a way somehow. Look, I'm telling you, the Lord will do it. You just got to trust him. I think he has us in this place of consecration for a reason. Because consecration gets us into the presence of the Lord. The consecration consecration allows us to hear the Lord more clearly, to see him, to experience him in greater ways. And whatever we go through, the Bible says that the Lord will help us to go through it. Even Joshua says it in Joshua chapter 3. It's right around verse 5. They were going through some stuff and they were about to experience a hard battle that they didn't know if they were going to win or not. But Joshua told them, he said, consecrate yourselves on tomorrow and watch the Lord do some great things in you. Look, it is in that consecration. It is in that time of putting yourself in front of the Lord and setting yourself apart and setting yourself aside for the Lord to use you. And you will see some great things. So it is in that place of consecration. So that's when we will see the Lord make a way somehow. So we thank God we want to continue in the spirit of worship because we serve a great and awesome and a mighty God. There's none like him in all the earth. And so we are grateful and thankful to our God, our Father, our Daddy, who is in heaven. Amen. God bless you. I didn't mean to say all of that. I, I, I'm not even preaching this morning. I'm not even going to preach this morning. I, I was I was away at, I went to a conference this week, and so I just knew I, was, I, I, I wasn't going to have time to do it. So I, I got one of, our, one of our ministers, one of our rams in the bush. Uh, to prepare this morning for us, I, I, I gave him, I gave him plenty of time. I, I gave him a whole month to prepare because I knew it, I knew it, and so and so I, I know I know it's just been marinating in his spirit. I know the Lord's been working in him and on him and through him, and I trust the Lord. I trust the word that comes out of him. Um, I just I, I, this is a brother that I have I have admired his walk with the Lord. Um, him and his wife, I've, I've admired their ministry, their passion for the Lord. They love the Lord, and it is evident in their walk, in their talk, in their interactions. And so we just, I just, I just want you guys to brace yourself because the Lord speaks. Uh, you know, my mommy used to say the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> And so, look, it's, it, you know, I, I, I don't know what he's going to preach. I just, I just talked to him this week and just said, look, I'm praying for you. I, I don't even need to know. I just, I'm just praying because I know the Lord is going to give you a word. And so brace yourself and, and pray for him. It is Minister Joe Williams. Um, pray for him. Keep him lifted up. And, and just pray that the Lord will get glory out of his word. And so keep him lifted up in prayer, and I'm just going to open it up for him. Minister Joe, make your way up here, sir, and it is all on you now. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? <laughs> when the wicked, even my enemy and my foe, they come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and they fail. Though a host <laughs> may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing, hey, one thing have I desired, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hallelujah. That's my theme song. Hey, y'all know how Rocky Balboa got that, uh, dun, 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 Psalm 27 is my thing. That gets me hyped. Get me ready to battle the devil and any forces that he brings. Would you give, would, would y'all just stand and give God some glory in this place? Come on, lift him up. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He has made a way as they have. He will make. Won't he do it? Hey! Won't God. If he hadn't done it in your life, he will do it. Just trust him. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Woo! He will direct your path. Ah, I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. I was on my way to hell. Hey! Hey! But God stepped in and interrupted the devil's plan. And look where I am now. Never thought I would be preaching the word of God. I had too much hell in me. But when God came in and changed some stuff, woo, I have a new desire now. Hey, hey. I have a new desire. And that desire is to please the Lord. Uh, I didn't mean to do all that. Let's, uh, I, let, let's go ahead and get into some word. Let's get some word. Let's get some word. Well, good morning, Union. Uh, those of you who, who are in-house, those online, um, it's just wonderful to be here today amongst the saints. It really is. It really is. Uh, I give glory to God, give glory to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, Woo, and give glory to the Holy Spirit who lives in each and every born-again true believer. If you're a true believer, the Holy Spirit lives in you right now. So if the Holy Spirit is in you right now and, and the word of God is going forth, we're going to rejoice today because the Holy Spirit is not going to let you sit in your seat on some word. I'm going to do my best, but remember, it's not me. I've released it to the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's job now. Hey, hey, I haven't taken myself off the hook. But it's the Holy Spirit's job. Listen, listen. I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Rob, that team over there. That's an awesome tag team, dual team right there. I thank you, Pastor. Really appreciate you. I want to thank all you, my union family. Um, just appreciate you guys. I want to thank my immediate family. Thank my mom. My mom's here today. Where's my mom at? Where is she at? Oh, there she is. My mom's here today. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God for my, for my wife, most definitely. 35 years of marriage this year, and it still feel like we're on our honeymoon. Glory. Hallelujah. It is good. And it's all because of Jesus now. Now, it, it ain't always been like that now, but, but, but once we allow Jesus to root us in what we need, the word of God. I, let me stop lingering. I don't have that much time. Let me see. I want to do three specific things today. Three specific. The first one is proclaim the word of God. Most definitely. For, for, I want to proclaim the word, the truth of God's word to you. And then to those of you who are not saved today, you're in the right place. Because I want to proclaim the word of God to you and get you saved today. That's what it, it's, it's your choice the word is going forth, but we want to get you saved today through the word of God. I can't do it. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. And then, and then the third thing, uh, those of you who are saved but have kind of drifted away a little bit, we want to draw you back in closer. 
Uh, look, just, just closer. I mean, sometimes things get hard and you drift away. But we want to draw you closer with the Word of God. It's all done through the Word of God. All done through the Word of God. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get right, in, right into this Word. Right into this Word. So let's pray. Everybody bow with me, please. Um, God, my prayer is and always has been, God, that you would stir up the dirt, God. Uh, we're nothing but dirt, God. That's, 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 what we prof- that's what we know we are. We're nothing but dirt, God. So till up the fallow ground, God, of our hearts and prepare the soil uh, for seed of your word to take roots in our hearts, God. We pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send even right now, God, to his harvest workers. We are the workers. Now prepare us, God, to hear a word, to hear a seed planted in our heart that will take us further. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Um, there was a little boy. Uh, he was about three or four years old. And uh, this little boy, he was confused. Uh, he was confused about where his heart was. And the reason he was confused about where his heart was because every time he would interact with his grandmother, whether he would go over to her house or whether she would come over to his house, she would always give him these kind words of endearment. Bless your little heart, baby. Bless your little heart. And it never failed. Every time she gave her grandson these little kind words of endearment, she would pat him on his rear end. So it looked something like this. Bless your little heart, baby. Bless your little heart. So the little boy was confused because every time that his grandmother would reference his heart, she would pat him on his behind. Bless your little heart, baby. Bless your little heart. So for a long time, a long time, the little boy always thought that his heart was back there with his rear end. He, he always thought that. But listen, listen, those of you who might be chuckling a little bit about the little boy's confusion, be careful because we as Christians, as born-again believers, sometimes forget where our hearts are. We sometimes forget that the Lord holds our heart in his hand and we do all kinds of things that is contrary to the way God has placed our hearts uh, that we are blessed in. Now listen, Proverbs, there's several scriptures. I'm going to give you a couple. Proverbs 21 and 1 says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns them wherever he wishes. Our hands are in the hearts of the Lord. And then Proverbs 16 and 9 says, A man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Go ahead and make your plans. Do what you want to. But it's always going to turn out to benefit the kingdom of God because that's the way God planned it. And then uh, Proverbs uh, 3 and 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Listen, if you render, surrender your heart to the Lord, he will lead you in a way without confusion. He will lead you in a way out of confusion. God is not the author of confusion, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33 says, but he is the author and the finisher and the perfecter of our faith. Can I get a hallelujah on that? God will do it. He is, and that's in Galatians, that's in Hebrews 12 and 22. Now listen. The little boy was a little bit confused. Yeah, 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 at first. But um, as he got a little older and as he got a little wiser, he finally realized where his heart was. No, not in his chest cavity. No, not not there. His heart wasn't there. Um, not back there with his rear end. <laughs> he knew it wasn't there after he got a little older and a little wiser. But he realized that his heart was in the hands of the Lord. And that was after 
he surrendered his life to Jesus Christ. After he surrendered his life to Jesus Christ, that's when he knew where his heart was. That's when he knew where his heart was. I would like to title this message with a question. Where is your heart? Come on now. Spiritually, where is your heart? Where is your heart? That, that question is more important uh, than a lot of us might even imagine. Because uh, from the heart, the Bible says, flows the issues of life. Fr from the heart, the Bible says, uh, flows the issues of life. And uh, because uh, from the heart flows the issues of life, we have to be very careful where we allow our hearts to stray off to. Don't allow your heart to stray. And in, in, in Proverbs 4 and 23, that's where that verse comes from. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issue of life. Keep your heart with all, for out of it spring the the issue of life. The word of issue is dealing, in, in, in this scripture, is dealing with the full spectrum of life, especially with problems and difficulties of this life. That's what that issue is dealing with in, 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 this, in this verse. So Proverbs 4.23 from the uh, New King James Version.